Hello everyone, welcome to my structural analysis tutoring section. I'm Cheng Ning. Today I'm going to show you how to use Castigano theorem to solve a statically indeterminate structure. Alright, let's take a look at the question first. This is basically a beam, a simple beam, beam AB. The structure is fixed supported at A and is connected to a spring at point B. Uh, the spring has a stiffness coefficient of k and uh, EIL are the properties of the beam. The structure is also subjected to a concentrated external moment, M0, and uh, you are asked to determine the reaction force of the system. Alright, the first thing you need to realize is that uh, this is a statically indeterminate structure. Why? Because uh, here we have, let's change the pen first, here we have three unknown, right? We have AX, okay, AY, and uh, I'm not an A, right? So, and uh, we have also have another unknown here called, let's call it FS, the force provided by the spring, okay? And uh, so we have four unknowns and we have only three equivalent conditions, uh, equations, uh, so the degree of indeterminacy is uh, 1. So we cannot solve it by only using the uh, equilibrium conditions. We need uh, other methods to solve the problem. Okay, one of the famous problems is to use uh, Castigliano theorem. Alright? So how do we use this uh, methods? Okay, there are five steps you need to do. Okay, first you need to choose redundant force. Okay, the, the number of redundant force depends on the degree of indeterminacy. It is at this case is equal to 1. Alright? And uh, we would like to choose uh, Fs as our redundant force. Uh, you may use uh, Ax, Ay, or Ma you know, to do to as a redundant force, but it's not that convenient. It's inconvenient. Okay, it's, believe me or not. You can try it at your home. And uh, the next step is to express the reaction forces as a function of the redundant force. Okay, so. Uh, so what I mean is that you need to express a y m a as a function of f s, and let's do it together. Okay, uh, here we know that from the equilibrium condition we know that a x is equal to zero a y. Uh, from the equilibrium of along the vertical direction we know that this is equal to f s, and uh, from the uh, equilibrium of bending moment we know that this is equal to uh, f s multiplied by l minus m naught. Alright, so we need to express the reaction force as a function of the redundant force. So we already finished the second step, okay? The next step you need to do is to draw shear force and bending moment, bending moment diagram. I already draw this for you. This is a shear force, okay? There's a jump here, Fs, and there are no, there is no intermediate loadings, so it's a constant. Uh, so the function of this shear force diagram is a constant, Fs. X is a measure from this point to this point. Alright, uh, so, ah, one more thing, you need to draw the bending moment diagram, right? So this is a bending moment diagram. I plot it at 10 south side. Plot at 10 south sides. And uh, so our starting point is FSL minus M0. It's a value, right? It's a positive value. But I want I would like to put it at the tensile side, so we know that the the, ten, the tension is on the top. So we need to m multiply negative value here. So this is a negative value. Negative value, negative number, uh, negative number. All right, and then integration of the shear force diagram, which is a constant, and then along all along the beam, so throughout the beam you will get M0. Okay, so this is the function of the uh, bending moment diagram of this beam. So this is starting point M0 minus Fs times L, and then plus Fs, the integration of Fs is Fsx. Alright, if you apply x equal to L, you will get M0. Okay, basically it's the bending moment at the, at the point uh, B. It makes sense, right? Because the bending moment at point B is M0 and the bending is 
at the bottom of the beam. So it's at the bottom of the beam. I plot it at 10,000, right? So we already finished the first three steps. The next thing we need to do is to define the strain energy of the system, and then uh, and then uh, we try to apply the classical theorem. All right, let's define the strain energy of the system together. For this particular problem, there are two ways of uh, defining the system, the so-called system. Uh, let's do it together. Where is it? Methods one. Let's call it method one. Is like this, okay? We consider the system, uh, including uh, the spring and also the spring. So what I mean is that we we treat the the beam component and also the spring component as the total system. So the total strain energy of the system, let's call it U uh, one, is include uh, consists of uh the strain energy of the beam and also the strain energy uh, of the spring. So for this case, it's equal to the integration of m squared divided by 2ei and then plus the strain energy of the spring is basically the force inside the spring squared divided by 2k. Alright? So this is method one. It's, uh, again, method one consider uh, the beam and also the, the spring uh, as uh, parts of the system. So for method two, we can uh, you know exclude the beam. I don't know exclude the, uh, the, the, the 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 spring as a uh, part of the system. We consider this free body diagram, okay, we consider the spring, the force product of the spring as an external load. In this case, the strain energy consists of the beam, the strain energy of the beam on it, which is equal to something like this, alright, m squared divided by 2ei divided by dx. So, the last step we need to do is to apply Kastik Gallner theorem. So what is Kastik what is Kastik Gallner theorem? Basically it's something like this. What is my pen? Okay. Kastik Gallner say that the partial derivative of the strain energy at uh, any point, let's say I have to differentiate respect to the force, you will get the displacement at the, at the point, okay? The displacement at that point. For this case, because we consider the strain and energy uh, that's of the spring, so what it means is that this is the whole system, right? The Fs here refer to the force at the bottom, because we know that this is a fix. This is fixed, right? This cannot be. This cannot move. So there is no displacement. So this is zero. So what you need to do is to differentiate this thing and then uh, do some mathematical manipulation. I will do this later. Let's take a look at this, uh, I see. the method tools together. Again, we, we do the same thing. However, for method two, for this uh, kind of uh, methods, uh, here we consider this as a, an external load. Based on Castigliano theorem, there is the, the the differentiation of this relative to F S is equal to the displacement at point B. Let's call it delta B, right? So what is delta B? Um, wait, let's wait for a while, right? We know that we, we there is a spring a subsystem. There is a spring here. Uh, this is an external uh, force. We know that okay, if there is a there is a tension here, then the the there is, must be a deformation called delta, right? Delta. But we know that this delta plus this delta b must equal to zero. 
because of compatibility equation, okay? Com compatibility condition. Why? Because uh, delta B is downward, but delta is upward. These two points must close together. So, uh, what I mean is that, okay, this is equal to negative delta, and delta is equal to F S delta K. So if you move this po this function to this, you will find something like this. Because this is equal to UV, right? And then plus F S delta by K e oops. F S delta by K e equals to zero. So these two methods these two methods will use uh the same answer, alright? So what we need to do is to solve the solution solve the problem together. So let's do it together. Let's say I choose this method, okay? Uh FS and uh differentiation of this thing, right? Let's copy this thing here, okay? Let's do it part one by one. There are, there are two terms there. For the first one, the differentiation the differentiation of uh, this term with respect to f s is equals to zero to l, and then m because m square right the differentiation of m square is two m and then partial m divided by partial f s e i the two cancel out each other. Plus the second term, the differentiation of this one relative to fs is quite straightforward. Basically, it's fs divided by k. You can see that it's, you can get the same answer, okay? It's equal to zero. And uh, so, this is uh, quite crazy, right? When you see differentiation. So, what is m? m is equal to, uh, what is m? I also forgot. What is m? Alright, m not. I'm not minus fs delta minus times l and then plus fs times x so partial m multiple uh, with respect to partial fs is equal to x minus l so you substitute this term into this integration and after some uh, algebraic and uh, in, uh, operations you will get you will get this answer What's the answer? The answer is something like this. Plus 2 over 3. Alright, and then what you need to do is to okay substitute this value back to the reaction force, then you can you, you finish the problem. So the I the key idea here is to follow is to define the strain energy, okay? Define the strain energy, and also choose uh and an appropriate uh uh redundant force to start the problem, and uh, and then the rest of it is just uh, some mathematical operation. You just need to uh be careful, you no know, to avoid mistake. And also for methods two, methods two uh, is is quite uh, inconvenient. Okay, usually I will, I prefer use methods one because I don't need to consider the compatibility equation. Okay, it's very troublesome. You need to think. Uh, you need to think more. So I'm very lazy, so I will prefer to use method one. I always consider the spring as part of the system to solve the problem. Alright, um, thanks for your watching. Uh, if you like my uh, tutorial section, feel free to press the like button and also subscribe my channel. Thank you very much.